for watercolor, first place, Marie Tidwell. Second place, watercolor, Sandra Chansey. Third place, watercolor, Doris Wallace. All, first place, Pauline Clark. Second place, Jenny Cipher, a time to feed the chickens. Third place, Ruth Burnett, rest time. Pastels, Jackie Hinderleiter, cows. Pastel, second place, Martha Honeycutt. We didn't have enough to do third place. Oh, okay. So. Miscellaneous. First place, Alice Laws. Second place, Randall. Crather? Bowler. 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 Oils, oh, this is the honorable mention in oils. Jackie Hinderleiter, Ronald uh, Reagan Cox, Scott Blessick, and Jenny Cipher, and Miss Doris Wallace. Yay. Uh, best of show. <laughs> best of show. Joy <laughs> Simon. Thanks for coming to get it. And so now we'll have in a critique. Yes, Jan so, will. Jan Loy, the judge, right. will critique Jan your Loy piece if you want. Okay. <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jan Lloyd. I taught at Clovis Community College for 20 years, and I retired two years ago. My husband and I are traveling now, so everybody's asking me about what artwork I'm doing. Well, not much. I'm definitely <laughs> traveling right now. But I do, uh, I still do my artwork. I'm working on right now a federal duck stamp, uh, which is the highest paying art competition of, of any in the world. And so if any of you are ever interested in uh, trying to make a million dollars, you can <laughs> enter the federal duck step competition. I've been entering it for 30 years and I've never won. <laughs> so, you know, I may never win, but I enjoy. It's, it's brought a whole new world to me of bird watching. So uh, through my art and through the greediness of wanting a big paycheck with it, I, I found a love for birds that I never knew that I would have before. So we all have our art for our various reasons. But thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me judge a show. This is an amazing group and a, a very prolific group of, of working people. Um, why do we like art? Uh, my husband, who's never had an art class in his life, can go over there and say, I like this, you know, and he'll, he, he might can tell you why he likes it or why he doesn't, or he may not even be able to tell you why he likes it. We have a lot of reasons why we like art. Now, as an instructor of art, I had to, you know, grade students on elements and principles of work. You know, did they use line correctly, uh, value correctly, color, did, was the texture correct, was it all unifying, did they, uh, you know, how did they use these elements and principles together to create a unified piece? And, and maybe with one artist I might think, wow, you know, um, what a great idea, but they just didn't do all the things right. And their idea was strong and I could see what was going through their head when they were doing it, they just didn't quite 
get it down, but I gave them high points because ideas are worth a million. I mean, your ideas, and even though, you know, as you get better, your paint strokes and your style and everything else becomes better, uh, you have to grade all of those things, uh, you know, considered. And the same thing when I uh, judge an artwork like this. Uh, for instance, as an artist, watercolor is my favorite medium. I, I started out learning oils when I was young, and my, on the paint by numbers things, you know, and everybody goes, oh, those are horrible. No, they teach you so much uh, that, that are not in the instructions. You know, you learn on your own as you're painting how to make that paint last longer and how to thin it out more with the, the things you've got. And, and you learn how to blend colors instead of having hard lines. So I learned oils through paint by number and then did more oils. And I thought, boy, I just love this. But the first time, and I was in seventh grade when I learned and ever used a watercolor, and I was hooked for life. It was like I met my soul medium. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and we all, everybody's going, yeah, I can see all the head shaking, because you know what you appreciate. Now, clay is my soul medium in watercolor, but I still do some work with acrylics and oils. You know, it's good to be versatile, and it's good to enjoy a lot of uh, different things. But um, I have to be careful that, because I love watercolor so much, that I don't pick those over others, you know, and, and of course our best of show was a watercolor, but it was a well-deserving, not because I like watercolors best, but because it is an awesome work. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to start with the winning ones, come around and, and hit those first, and then anyone, and then I've already critiqued a few of your, your have asked me ahead of time, you know, and I've gone ahead and critiqued, but if you have, you know, if yours did not win a position, uh, call me over and we'll we'll go to that one too. Now just remember in this art show we judge it a little differently. If you win a first, second, or third in one category, you cannot win a first, second, and third in another. Even if your artwork deserved it. That's the way this is judged. And the first time I judged it, I thought, oh that's gonna be so hard to do that, you know, and and now I appreciate that way of working, you know, uh, because everybody gets a chance because everybody who's an artist deserves to win, you know, Sometimes. you really do. I, I just believe that it's not about a competition, it's about the fact that you're putting paint on canvas, you deserve, you know, awards for that. So, I like this way of judging, it's a little difficult and I had to use, and thank you Sandra for helping tell me, oh no, this one got a first place over here, you can't put a first place, okay, well then, which one do I leave the first place on and what do I change over here that, you know, so she was able to help me out and we did a little bit of musical chairs, but we got it all worked out and it's, it's a wonderful way, I like this way of judging an art show, it, it is different than a lot of shows and I, I do like that, so, um, but we'll start over here with, best, you know, I mean, it just, it popped out at me, it was just, dynamic. The, I mean, you know, I thought this woman, or man, I didn't know at the time, you know, who had done it, uh, I thought knows the medium well. First of all, you can tell by the brush strokes. I mean, you, they've used, now watercolor can be done as a transparent medium, which most pure watercolorists will say you have to use it as a transparent medium. In other words, you need to be able to see layers beneath, you know, uh, you need to be able to be able to see whites beneath. But yet, Watercolor can also be used very opaquely. In the duck stamp competition, very many artists use it in a very opaque fashion. And so to me, because I'm a graphic designer, because I taught computer art, my theory on anything is anything goes in the arts. However you want to do it is what you do, and to heck with people who have rules. I just don't like rule makers in art. And this is where, you know, boy, when I was growing up, if, if my parents told me you do not cross that line on the sidewalk, I did not cross it. I was, I minded those rules, and I didn't get very many spankings like my brother did. But, but in art, this is my chance to break rules. This is where I get to play God. I get to create any way I want, and I'm not going to have people telling me that I can't do that, because we learn things by breaking rules, by changing things up. We learn whole new ways of doing things. Um, this thing, the, the minute I saw it, even even as I looked at back, these background mountains, I thought, you know, that's just a hint of color with a wet on wet that you just brush that in and, and it gave that mountain in the background. That's a woman who knows wet on wet. That's a person who knows, you know, how, how wet that background needs to be before you get it to spread too much. I mean, knowing the medium shows in this painting. Um, I love the, the dramatics, the drips, uh, the splatters, the the allowing of the, the water to run through to give the crevices of the rocks and the mounds, it, it gives just such a dynamic to this whole piece. I just, I was struck with it. I love, you know, the lines, 
uh, the indication of lines, not actual drawn lines, but shapes against shapes creating the lines, the lines of the texture growing through. Again, the splattering going on through here, uh, just bringing out the dynamics of the rock and the power of those, those rocks. It's just, it gives you, uh, it just makes you feel an appreciation for, of course, we don't get to see anything with mountains around here, so <laughs> you, you especially appreciate the gift of that. But very well done, very well done on your value changes, you know, atmospheric change. You've got, you know, the most dynamic part right up in here, but you see, you know, you've got three dimension to it too because you're looking back off into the distance to see the mountains off in the distance too. But excellent, very well done. Thank you. Very, uh, here you've got dramatic things going on. Here you've got this, this subtle and with the seabirds in there, you know, it just gives you the sense of peace. Again, we like art for different reasons. I looked at this and, and immediately I'm just in my happy place. You know, that's almost like going into my sister's house and, and you know, she, I have three younger sisters and every one of them are so different. You know, they have styles like a, an artwork does, you know, and I love them all. Uh, but I can go into one sister's house and it's like the peace of the earth is on me and I, I go to her house frequently because I need to feel that peace, you know. Uh, not that I'm not peaceful at my own home, but just walking into hers gives me that sense of peace. So I was struck by this not only by elements and principles of art, but because of the feeling it it gave to me uh, of that peace that I need. Again, we every artwork is legitimate. Whether you've ever had an art class, whether you know anything about art, if you like it, you have the reason to like it, and, and nobody can tell you that you well you can't like that because of this or, or for whatever reason. But that gave me a sense of peace. Again, you have a good dimension to this. You've got more clarity of things going on here, lighter in the background, so you've got that, that per depth perception that you've got because you've lightened up your hills back here. You know, you've got these beautiful wet-on-wet uh, -wet clouds that you've let the watercolor do its own job. Here, who is the artist on this? Let's see. This is Marie. Oh, Marie. Okay, Marie. <laughs> After I, I'm sitting here talking to everybody, but I, you know, because I didn't get to know who the artists were, you know, at the time, but you've just done an awesome job. How long have you been working with watercolor? She don't. You don't? <laughs> you know, I have got to applaud you in a huge way, because you know, it's just, you've done, especially if you don't work with watercolor to do something like this. Uh, you know, the first time I worked with watercolor, I just, me, you know, <laughs> well, I hope you will keep it idea. up, you know. <laughs> Maybe it'll become your next soul medium. I, I don't know. It's Again, it's still my soul medium, and I can uh, immediately see a good... Now, did, what did you work with before watercolor? She just no, oils. Uh, I have to be honest, that's, that's one of my first efforts and my last efforts. Really? <laughs> well, I hope you'll do more because you've just done an awesome job. I cut the oils because I can scrape them off and paint over and all this stuff. You know, this, watercolor, you can't. You have to plan it ahead of time. You really do have and to I'm think it through. I've always had discipline. So. Yeah. Yeah. And people who've done a lot of it may not have to plan it. I still sometimes make a list of what I'm going to do first, second, and third. You know, just because just I've like got to paint. You know, so it's a good, yeah. there you go. Well, it, You've done an excellent job. So but thank you. Awesome, awesome on there. Okay, and we had third place over here. Um, cowboy art in the cowboy world is always going to be important to us because of subject matter. Just you know, we see this in this area. Uh, what struck me about this one is the movement. You know, this this bull is bouncing him around, but you see that also in the atmosphere, and I think. Probably the atmosphere of it caught my attention more than anything else. You know, um, I did a painting of my little healer oh several years ago as a demo for my class, just to show them that you can have. Uh, in this case, you don't have a lot of background color, but it, you know, in, in the painting of my healer, it was just totally white back there. This would have worked even without that atmosphere, but I think the atmosphere of putting that movement also added maybe to the movement of the bull bucking, you know. So um, I, I, I love that. Now, what I like to do with a painting, because we, we think in terms of elements and principles of design, step back and you do a squint test at something. Now, when I squint at this, and, it, and you should always do this, not just step back across the room, but do the squint where you're just seeing lights and darks. Well, a little bit of a problem is all of this becomes almost the same when it's all together, you know. 
And so when I squint, I almost lose a little bit of that cowboy in there. There might could have been some little lighter areas even, you know. And it's hard with watercolor. Again, this is why I make my list because I think, do am I getting that light enough or am I getting it dark enough? Nice thing about watercolor, sometimes you can pick color off again, but sometimes you have to be careful because it can tear up your paper too, you know. You've just got to have enough experience with it. But I think maybe if there, I love the way the bull shows up very clearly, but I'd like to have even seen more of his edges, maybe where there, there's some more light source on his shirt that brings it out from this or even lightening up this blue in the background might have, you know, might have helped bring him out a little bit more. Of course, you step back and you don't, don't squint, you can see him. So it's not always about squinting, but uh, to give you that value change. But I've learned as I've gotten older, I have glaucoma and I do, I have a large blind spot. And so I tend to like things that have more value in them, even naturally, it helps me to see things better. So as I get older, especially, and as I lose more eyesight, then I, I really like being able to see that. Here's another one that was honorable mention. Uh, again, having a hard time between these. I love the dynamics. I could tell this is probably maybe the same artist that did these because they're so similar in style. I just love that root feel to it. You're just letting the artwork and the medium take over. And, you know, you're, it's just, this is just an awesome piece. It's every bit as awesome as that one. Again, it was a hard decision to, to decide what to do, but it just, it speaks of the earth and it just speaks of, you know, roots and the earth and, and limbs and, I mean, and just done so very well. Just, just amazing job on that too. Again, here, you know, you don't even have to squint at this. You see those value changes very well. And if I were to talk about all of the elements and principles of design, the most important element that I can tell you about is value. Value doesn't mean the cost of something or the expense of something. I'm talking about lights and darks, the lights and darks of something. If you're doing, you know, even when I do duck stamp art, I make sure I've got a sunlight source on that duck so it gives it a three-dimensional look to it. If I'm taking the photograph in a cloudy day, and I'm trying to paint a picture of a duck on a cloudy day, it tends to flatten out a lot. So I go out where I've got at least a light source or something reflecting back onto that duck. So I've got layers of light and layers of dark so that it gives it a three-dimensional look to it. So having your lights and darks like that, even though you're using more of an abstraction, it gives you depth in what you're working with. Over here, I love the whole style of this piece right here. Um, there's a certain softness to it that, you know, and everything, now, if you were to squint at this, you tend to lose this a little bit in here. Um, sometimes the style of painting that you're working with makes that okay. I'd still maybe bring out, now you've lightened this up here, I'd still maybe bring out a little bit more light here. And that could, you know, be done with maybe taking you know, a wet paintbrush and pulling some of it off again. You don't want to paint a lighter color on top of watercolor because it just doesn't work. But I just love the muted, the way that it all blends together. Again, it's very uniform because there's the same style going throughout. Sometimes, like when young kids or young or people who are just learning to do the arts, they will sometimes maybe do a little bit of a linear, type of painting over here and then they put big bold shapes over here and then they do gradations and very painterly style over here and the whole painting just doesn't match because they're learning all these techniques. Well this one, it all matches because it's all the te same technique throughout but very well done. Ac actually a very excellent painting. Yeah. And again when we talk about, um, you've probably heard about complements in colors. If you've got a color wheel and I should have thought to bring one, but whatever is the opposite on the color wheel, if you've got yellow, is it um, whatever is the complement, if you have those complementary colors, things will stand out at you a lot better. Oranges and greens always show up well together. Purples and yellows tend to show up because of the complementary, or if they're even a split complementary on the wheel are, are good choices to take. So I, I even look at my color wheel a lot of times before I start a painting and decide, okay, what, what am I going to make sure I use so that these things, you know, really come out? Let's go to this one next. Um, it got an honorable mention. Uh, again, we, we only allow 
a first, second, and third in each category. If you've gotten something somewhere else, you can't get it in another place, but we can go honorable mention. Um, the subject matter hit me. Uh, first of all, I love, you know, any kind of Adobe anything. I just, I'm in love with Santa Fe and the Santa Fe look. So, subject matter, that's a good enough reason, but it wasn't just the subject matter, it's well done too. Now, you've got a little more softness going on here and a little more detail here. If you have one area where you change up your style just a little bit to give it an accent, I would say this is, even though that's a very important part of this painting, this is kind of an accent because it's more detailed. Um, but there's a, just a loveliness to those yucca that if you get a chance, come up here and look at them closer. But uh, it gives it a, a more detailed, not so soft as everything else. So again, it, it pops out a little bit right there. Um, you know, we talk about, we don't do something linear here where it's soft here. Well, a little bit on an accent makes it okay to do that. But very good, everything shows up. I can do the squint test here and everything shows up quite well as I, I squint at it. Okay, let's go over to this one here, watercolor. Um, you know, we see so many of the, the windmills in this area, and this one's had its final days. It's no longer working, and it's up against the windmills now that are now for a different pur purpose. This was to draw water to the surface, where these are to pull in from the air and give us an energy source. So, for different reasons, I love the title too. You know, you picked a good title for it. Um, but excellent job on using the watercolor, using what you needed to get your clouds to give them that beautiful uh, look that you've got to them. Um, you've done a really good job on, on the grasses. The yellows go against the blue very well. Again, very complementary to each other. Uh, really pull your eye in here. You've done a good job. If Even from squinting, you haven't over detailed your windmills here, but you can squint and you can, and you can still see them. You can still see even this one, you put a little light source on one edge to give you that, it pops it out. Just putting that one tiny, it doesn't have to be big, but just a tiny little streak of light or leaving that paint off there so that you can see the white of the paper. Um, that just made the difference in, in, in that painting. So sometimes a painting can be strong, but just the little tiny details at the very end pop it out, make it a little bit better. So good job on that. All right, honorable mention. Uh, is this is this Santa Fe by any chance? Well, that one Santa Fe, was it? No, okay. New Orleans. New Orleans, okay. Uh, were they having an old car day there or something? That's or when I was a, when a you very were... young. <laughs> I had a fairly recent car day. <laughs> no, no, it was a, it was a postcard I sent my mother was, on a okay. senior trip. So you went to the... Uh, my husband and I, he remodels old cars, and he's race car driving with a new, well, 72, um, but he's vamped it up, and then he's got it would the be in the 50s. But, you know, I, some of us, many of us in here, I, without insulting us, we can appreciate that because of the antiquity of the cars, and, you know, it brings us back in time. Again, there's a lot of reasons to like an artwork. Uh, I just, I was drawn to this, too. It also reminds me of Santa Fe for some reason. Uh, it just, there's some buildings there that you know, have the, the walkways up on the second floor like that, and, uh, but it, I just thought of it. Uh, uh, so how long ago did you do this painting? Did you do this? In, it's in recent. Yeah. In recent, okay. Uh, I squint at this, I can see things real, you know, you can see the shadows of the door. There are, you can see the buildings against each other. You've used more of a linear approach in through here, but you've got some, uh, there are some other things I think you could even shadow detail more depth and shadow there. You've probably seen that yourself, saying, well, you know, I could have put maybe a little bit more shadow here. And those are things you can always go back on and do. And the same thing with the car. I mean, you've got a lighter source over here, even adding a little more shadow area back over here on that left side there to, to do it. I like the fact that you don't have a detailed I like the fact that the, the, the people are my, like, kind of like angels, they don't have faces, you know, and I love, uh, I love that kind of work, but I'd still put maybe a little more depth, darkness over to one side, even though you don't have to put detail on those faces, his head kind of disappears into, into the background there, but a, a beautiful work, nonetheless, just a few things to, to maybe touch it up on. Okay. Put some principles of design. Uh, again, the similarity of style throughout, using that uniformity throughout is good. Uh, a little more detail on this figure. A little more detail 
emphasizes it. So it's, it's a little more detailed than you'd see in the rest of it, but because of that one small area of detail, that's the main attraction, even though the whole thing, you look, you know, as an artist, we, we start somewhere and then we rove around. First thing I do is look right at that, the activity of her feeding, I go around and I come back around to her. So you've got that emphasis with the detail in her, her figure. The sunlight, this is what strikes me, it gives it a much more, much more three-dimensional here than here. Because this source of light hits her in her calf. Probably, and it hits her in her face. You get a little touch of it on her hands, a little on her back. Here, there might could have been a little bit of, of that same sunlight hitting maybe in a few of these to lighten that up a little bit more. But you get that source of the sun coming through, whether it's coming through clouds or whether it's come through some limbs. You know, you're seeing the shadows of the tree there, but excellently, uh, very, very well uh, executed on that. A good job. And also, again, I loved it for the elements and principles, the, the execution of the painting style, but I also it reminded me of a photo I took of my niece feeding our chickens years ago. I just, it, you know, and it, it, my, my niece uh, died a few years ago, and I've just, uh, I've gone back to that picture and looked at it several times, but it, it just, it, again, it gave me a reason to like it even over the elements and principles of it, you know, for whatever reason we love something, but that struck me as, as something that will always remind me of my niece, so I had to love that immediately too. Let's go over to this honorable mention over here, and the one directly across, I think the same artist did these, was that, uh, no, that's Lo Snyder there, okay. Um, a, similar, a similar style and approach to the paintings, I almost thought it was the same artist here. Um, the clouds here, the, the depth of those and those thunderstorms coming in are awesome. That was well done. You've got light sources of, of the clouds coming here. Um, awesome job on that. And doesn't that just, it just takes you through. And here you've got this area of emphasis where this little area is lit up more than anything else. So you're, you're brought into it first here, but then you can't help but just kind of move. Your eye goes all over. But Again, very well executed, the paint strokes. Um, streams are hard to do. I have seen so many look like curly Q lines that, that you didn't know, what, but this is, you do your streams well. I mean, this is a stream that goes in. It's not, you know, and, and those are especially hard for artists. Even better artists have a difficult time, but you've managed to not only get your stream in in the way that it needs to meander through, but you've your reflections, you, the way you put your paints in, you know, everything works really well. You've got the lights against the dark, but yet you can see, you know, you had a, a light area of the stream in here, but to keep it from being too much the same value of your grass, you put in some dark areas of your rocks here, so that it really, you've got that contrast going on, so you can see it as it goes throughout. So, again, very, very well done. And this by Lois Snyder over here. I didn't recognize that as her piece. I didn't. I don't think I remembered seeing her paint on that one. But um, she uses her grandkids a lot in her paintings. And I don't know if she put her grandchild on in that painting and then, you know, turned his hair dark or whatever. You know, because I know this is her grandchild here too. You know, but um, she's done a, a good job of this. Again, the trees, the similarity. You can squint at this and you can see your darks and lights in there. Um, I'm really focusing on value in this particular critique because I think, again, it's the most important thing we can we can learn in art once we have our values down. Because it doesn't matter. I don't, yeah, it's got an honorable mention on here. I wish he was here. I'd seen this years ago. Uh, he was a priest who just retired at uh, the same time. I, or I guess he retired last year. Um, this is a very kind of a religious scene, but I love the ideas and the thought that goes behind everything. You know, this is, and he's got good execution of style too. You can see um, Jesus in the clouds here, but you can see the very detailed look of the priest and, and the people coming up uh, behind it. Kind of, when I first saw it, it reminded me of a scene from Breaking Bad. How many of you have ever watched that show? It's about a, um, 
uh, chemistry high school teacher who breaks bad. In other words, he starts making methamphetamines. Um, and uh, he, there's a scene in it where these really bad cartel people are crawling in the dirt and they go up to an altar and they put pictures of people they want to die in these altars. So they're using this hatefulness and death thing in religion, you know. Um, and uh, but it, the scene of them crawling made me think of that. And uh, but I love Scott's work. Um, it's very thought provoking. Uh, and and this is something uh, definitely I had to think. Wow, and maybe I didn't give it a first place because I. I've seen it before somewhere, or maybe had given it a first place somewhere else. I, I don't know, but I, I love a very different. Again, you've got really hard, detailed line and uh, things going on in here, a different sort of style than a lot of things that we see in here. But well, if you were to look at that, what would you say? What what is the message to it? Do you think there's a message to it? Mm -hmm. I would say it has a pretty strong message, you know. All his you know. Uh, so, yeah, you could say, well, is it about pollution? Is it about, you know, uh, the carnage of our cities? Uh, you know, is it, you know, look at the wars that are going on. You've got these army guys going in here. You've got the snakes that are from a religious sort of ceremony. I mean, there's, so there's, you know, and sometimes the artist may say, well, it's really about this particular thing. And yet you're getting the same sort of feel. So it's the emotion you get out of it, not so much the, the exact thing that he's trying to say. But I'll bet you he's going to tell, he could tell you about pollution and the things we're doing to our earth. And, and that would be his message. I like I mean. the darkness of his sky. The darkness and the, the light against the dark. You know, you see the moon, but you see this big, and this is just like a hideous green fog of whatever this is, smog going off into the distance. And it's, it's just, you know, encompassing the earth, you know, pollution, so, pollution yeah, uh, I, yeah, not fog, fog is a good thing, I mean, pollution is a whole different thing, but, but that Jesus Christ is found right in that pollution, <laughs> looking down, you know, I don't think, he's not, he's not saying anything against Christ with this, but he's saying Christ is looking over us in spite of all of this, you know. But uh, it's pretty amazing, and all of these little cars on all this highway, you know, that are just twisting and turning everywhere, you know. But uh, you know, and, and maybe because of paintings like this, people are trying to clean up our earth now. There's, you know, emission controls now, and even in cars, they're not allowed to have but so much emissions. You know, and they're going to a, a gas electric hybrids now to keep those kinds of things from happening. And, and eventually we'll get things cleaned up. But uh, I think it's important to see artwork like that, whether it, and especially artwork that disturbs us. You know, we need to be disturbed. Uh, a beautiful job done on the, on the uh, pastel and the, the execution of it. You know, you can get back now. If I squint a little bit here, I lose the plane. I see the edge up here, but it's, the whole thing is meant to be soft. Uh, I think I might, you know, uh, if I squint a little bit more, I might have put a little bit either dark areas on one edge of the wing and maybe a little bit light to maybe bring it out a little bit more. Again, it's, uh, you know, you see this real distinctly in the background, you know, when you're squinting at it. You, you squint and you see this dark against this light against this light, uh, you know, but the plane maybe, maybe could show up just a little bit better. Uh, you know, it's, but it's an awesome painting done, very well done, uh, or I should say pastel because you're using a whole different process with pastels. But, uh, these two were absolutely wonderful. I think one had won a first place somewhere else. Uh, um, cows in this area, uh, my husband raises cattle. He doesn't raise Hereford, he raises Key Angus. But there's just nothing like Hereford in this area. Everybody's going, boo, I like, <laughs> you know, we like Hereford in this area, you know. Uh, very well done. Squint at this. Boy, this one pops right out. There's a three-dimensional look to it because you've got a light source and you've got a shadow source and you've got, uh, you know, if this cow had been moved back a little bit and this light of him was right in here, it wouldn't have worked. So I don't know whether, uh, who is our artist here? Jackie. Jackie. Okay. Um, you know, if Jackie had to maybe move it up a little bit or darken it or change the pattern on the cow or took the, maybe worked off of a photograph and, and you know, as artists we have to manipulate things so that they work for us. It's just like now you see this nose right here. Again, this gives you dimension. This is in the foreground. This is middle ground. That is background. So it gives you that dimension to look through. But if this had been up against a wide area, it wouldn't have worked. There has to be this dark area of this cow right here. There has to be this dark area of this cow for this one to show up, you know, and for that light area. But very, again, very well executed. 
Um, I've got one pastel that I've done, and it's in my house, and I did it over an old watercolor. And I, I love it, but I, I realize, boy, pastel is not as easy as it looks. And I have a great admiration for people who do pastels and do them well like this. And again, this, well, this could be, you know, you know, in the winter circle too. I think it won a first place or second or, or in another area. So again, it's a very good painting. Um, you know, the lights and the darks, the shadow source, you know, even though it's not a hard sunlight, but it is a, a gentle light that you still, but you still, you see that light and dark in there. So it's, again, very well done. Okay, let's photography. I taught black and white photography for a long time at the college, and then when that kind of dried up and it went all digital, I taught the digital photography classes. I taught them online, I taught them in class, I taught the advanced digital photography. Um, Almost anything that you see anymore, uh, we, we just take digital photos because it's harder to get film anymore. Um, and now the quality of the printers, even though they're dot, now was this done with digital? Or, okay. Uh, with dot matrix, y you can't even see, the, the printers are so good you can't see the dots. It used to be in the early days you'd see the dots, the dot matrix, of the, you know. Uh, nowadays, they're just as, uh, you know, I can't tell the difference between something that's gone through a dark room and something that's just been printed out on a printer because the, the quality of print is so well. On this one, you know, there have been people, and I've had, even my students would come in and say, you know, um, I like photography for the purity of it. I don't want to be, be manipulating anything with Photoshop. And if you can do that, great. I manipulate a lot with Photoshop because I taught it, you know, and so, I, again, because I don't put any rules on anything I do, I'll use it sometimes, uh, you know, whereas here you've got a pure photo on its own, no lightening up, no using Photoshop to lighten an area, and then over here you've got extreme manipulation with some of the tools in Photoshop. You know, different styles, but I love them both. You know, and I, again, don't put rules on something. I do, I love this photo, and it struck me through any of the photographs that I saw here. Uh, it's such a poignant piece, the subject matter of whether that's the sister and her little brother or her sibling or somebody, just one of the older girls babysitting, or maybe a very young mother. Um, and in photography, you know, you can you have posed photos, but when you can go out and just take the photo in the moment, those are the most powerful po photos that you can get. Um, these photos shoots in in you know that they do of families in in the studios are they're okay, but they're being replaced by on the moment things. If you can find great shots, well, to do that you just have to take a whole lot of photos because you I mean I may go out and take five thousand photos of the five thousand that I took when I was in um, Alaska this summer there might be 30 that are just awesome. And 30 is a whole lot out of 5,000, I think, because I just snapped everything. You were in the right place at the right time. I don't know whether you were standing there watching her walk up, but you got this, I mean, you know, in the dimension here, you've got this light source that's nice. I mean, I would have, you know, in Photoshop, you, I thought, well, maybe she used it to help bring out that nose, but you were just right there at the right angle with the right light. You didn't have to use Photoshop. Um, if the photo had been maybe in too much dark, you could have used Photoshop to lighten up an area of the nose or something. Or do, you know, so Photoshop is okay to do those things with. And again, because I teach those things, but it's so nice that you can do it with the purity of just the camera and not messing with anything else. But it's a very poignant piece. It, it, it says everything about that culture. Uh, uh, the culture, you know, you don't get a s sense of deprivation. There, this child is thin, but you don't get deprivation. You get caring, a feeling of someone caring for someone else, and that's what makes it so poignant. But what makes it good is the fact that you've got a light source and a dark source. You've got things that show up well against each other. That this rock background, she shows up so well. This area of value in his skin is so close to this area here, but he's got that shadow right around that edge that just naturally bring him, brings him out. And again, you couldn't have asked for a better photo. You've got a different kind of photo of here. Again, you, it's almost like you're just looking at stripes going along. So, you know, you captured a, a very nice idea with this, the zebras over here, too. But, um, let's look at this, the little dogs over here. 
Uh, this was used, some tools, uh, I could almost tell you what the tools are, but what I liked about it, after, I mean, I just loved the color and everything that was put on the three dogs and, and the tools that they were used in Photoshop, but this little guy licking his lips at this ball, and the ball sitting out here, it's almost like a, it gives it another dimension to it, too. Uh, the, the colors and everything else are brought out more because of the Photoshop used on it. Uh, again, I love any kind of manipulation with photos. I don't have rules myself over photography. Um, I, I like it all, you know, and I want to look at everything. So, uh, Let's look over here. We've got a couple of honorable mentions. We've got a third place back here. And so I've got a pencil drawing that someone did of um, Native American from years back that I keep in my house. It's one of the best pencil drawings I've ever seen. Um, we sometimes tend to forget just black and whites and, and pencil drawing as the value they are. This is pen and ink. Um, but shows up everything, uh, you know, shows up very well. Good texture and, and detail with that. A uh, nice sense of uh, a farm life uh, just with a uh, pen and ink, but very well done. Um, I love this. I'd love to see more ceramics here, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm doing. I'm getting back into my ceramics again too. So Doris and I are going to have to get together and do some pots and talk some shop uh, here very soon. Um, but you know, I just love the idea of these. You know, here you've got. It's almost like a storyteller. But she's. You know, you've got this whole group of interesting things going on with these kids. I mean, they're doing everything from looking away to hauling up their friend on the side over here to looking off at various things, you know, but all part of the same pot. The uniformity of the colors used, um, you know, just a, uh, it's a beautiful job. You just wonderful job on it. Thank you, Excellent. Um, and an honorable mention here, uh, I, again, I love, I love the, the use of Photoshop here to create this particular look. Uh, the, the little boy, this is almost a classic look here, but uh, an honorable mention, but could have easily gone, you know, as a winner too, but uh, just a very nice, nice composition there. And something that, you know, if that's especially your child or your grandchild, that you would hang forever in your house and, and have a, an appreciation for it. So. But because there, that person already had a first place, we had to switch it off, and I just gave it an honorable uh, sure. mention. Uh, let's talk about portraits a minute. Portraits are... Uh, you know, a good portrait's hard to do. Uh, I can do portraits in watercolor, but I cannot do a portrait in oil. And I just have a deep appreciation for anyone who can do portraits like this. Uh, they captured, I'm sure, the likeness. You've got a sunlight source, but look at the shadows. When we talk about value, this is a prime example of giving and getting a three-dimensional look on a two-dimensional plane. Two-dimensional being height and width, but now we've got depth because of the light source of the shadow source. And probably more so in this one painting than any of the others in the room, we get the light source uh, that's so well done. Teeth are hard to do. This was done so well. I mean, the teeth, the eyes, you know, the shadow of the bangs across the nose. Okay, uh, just such an awesome job, beautiful job. Yeah, now I can see it. Okay, yes, you got that. So, uh, you know, and is this a family member? Or did you just happen to capture right, somebody? My daughter. Okay. My so my mother took the photo. And, and you worked off of that. So is it a recent painting or did you do it a while no, ago? No, it's, it's fairly recent. Fairly recent. Okay. And I hope they have it hanging in their house because it's just, it's something now. Is she that age right now or is she a little older uh, now? Maybe six months older. Six months older. So it's recent. You know, she'll, as she grows, they'll be able to go back to this and see it you know, so much, you know, and appreciate it so much more, but I hope you'll have it hanging, or they'll have it hanging somewhere they can keep it up all the time. Um, gosh, it's, you just did such an awesome job on it. For a portrait, it's just one of the best portraits I've seen, and I think it's probably a gift that you have that, you know, uh, maybe you can come over and teach me portraits someday, <laughs> you know, I just, I would, you know, and, and oils too, because I, again, I've gone to watercolor, but I need to re- retouch the oils again too but just I'm just so impressed with the light source everything it's just an okay. absolute beautiful work so. um, you know we see horses in this area you know so much of the horses have gone away you know in the country but we get to see them here it's a it's a beautiful picture you again your light source here 
if you, I do the squint test on everything. That is my most important thing to do. The horses show up very well against the light background. Very well done. The tree source, the tree, the trunk of the tree is the same kind of browns that you've got in here, so you've used the uniformity of that too. Um, you know, they just, they really come out at you. You could have even done a painting, you know, and taken it and just enlarged that and had a wonderful painting. So you've got a painting within a painting. You don't have to just have that, but um, that'd be that'd be beautiful in any wall too. Uh, and presented very well with the frame that you've got. That's another thing we have to think about. How are we going to show our work and how are we going to put it up there? And, and some frames just do not match a painting. This frame matches that painting and that style. You know, the rope, you think of the rope, the horses, that's all fit in with the painting. The wood, the wood of this, the wood of the tree there, it just, you know, it all helps it work together really well. So, but an excellent job on that one. And I did the painting for the frame. <laughs> did you? Well, it, you know, it almost shows that you did because, you know, it, it's it's a western scene, a horse scene. The the frame says horses. They just say that automatically. So you know, it was well thought out. And I've done that before too. I've seen a frame that I thought, well, the only thing I can do with this is do a western scene in it because it had you know a rope feel to it or it had a rope texture on it or something. But but very good choice. I'm I'm proud of you. Excellent choice. And then we forgot. There's several florals in here, and. Everyone should have a floral. I used to, I told people I'd, I'd go right past a floral in any art show, any work student did. I just, I tended to just pass it by. That was my prejudice. And for years it was. And then I thought, you know what? Uh, and I told my husband once, I said, you know, if you ever are trying to forgive me or, or get forgotten or forgiven for anything, give me flowers. You know, I, I like flowers in my house. And, uh, I think I've been given flowers once in <laughs> 30, or we've been married 40 years now. No, he's given me flowers a few times, but flowers, you know, and I was talking to somebody else, some man one time said, that's such a waste of money. Flower, why would you spend $10 on some flowers to put in? Why don't you just, why would you put a bunch of weeds and stuff in a, in a flower vase? And I, I thought, no, you know, flowers dispel the negativity that have been brought into the house. If you've had a bad day and you come in stomping and storming and whining about something, Flowers will dispel that. Flowers put, not only through their aroma, roses and other things, you know, have such a beautiful smell to them, but the beauty of the color to them, the naturalness of bringing something from nature inside, it's like saying, shut your whining mouth, it's time to just kick back. Flowers do say that. And for a long time I thought, well, no, I'd rather have flowers than really sitting in a vase than have a painting of them. But, you know, sometimes of the years you just can't get good flowers. Almost, almost at Walmart you can get them now. You know, they have them all the time because they go to greenhouses. But, um, you know, I've, I've come a long way in my appreciation for florals. I believe that everyone should have a floral painting in their house because if it's dead winter, you've always got flowers up. Even a painting, a floral painting, will dispel negativity. Uh, we can all be negative. I have my bad days. Not very often, thankfully. I tend to be a very joyful person, but flowers will just remind me, you know, get your act together, Jan. There's, why are you fussing about this one? You could just be, you know, appreciating that. You know, so flowers have a semblance for me of just dispelling negativity, bringing about the beauty. And so I love florals now. So it took me a long time to get to them. Let me tell you why this one strikes me over all of the other florals and not maybe there's some others that are so awesome here too but look at this nice little tenderness going on the green you see more detail here because it's in the foreground but this is just done very lightly it's in the background it could all be one big mess of color that's just whopped together but they have put a little bit of that edge of that uh, of the leaves for you to see in the background and it gives dimension that's background whereas this is foreground and so having that darker tendency but not overdoing your detail you've got that depth perception you know you've lightened that up to give that that depth perception through there um, you've got this little character here but I still don't see it as a, a, a distinction point I see the flowers first as the distinction point and then but the whole thing working together and given that dimension it's just 
just a very well done floral. And, and I, I congratulate Pauline on that. Uh, and uh, again, if you've not ever done florals, then they're difficult to do too. I don't, you know, I, I don't have as much success with florals. I've started doing them, large watercolors and uh, doing more of the Georgia O'Keeffe kind of style to them. But, you know, it's brought color out in my house. And, and again, and when I see it, it reminds me again, dispel your own negativity, you know. Uh, but a beautiful job. Well, no, but they don't look how she does. Well, even do a movie, but I'll never do it. Got, she might have to put paint on there. It can't be just a photographer. Because there's paint on there. Well, I don't know either. I wish I did. Mm. <laughs> we know you're not in that somebody I was just going to ask you just because I'm curious. I like this one. But I know